Hello, in this video, I would like to introduce externalities. So, externalities is one type of the market failure, and we never talk about market failure before, right? Before we talk about uh, in other previous chapters, we said their markets are perfectly competitive market. There is no market failure. However, in reality, market most of the time it will face market failure, and externality is one type of market failure. Externality could be negative, could be positive. Okay, could be positive, could be negative. So for the negative externalities, for example, uh, air pollution. So you can notice、uh, if you live in the big cities, especially in their California, I notice their air quality in California could be the one of the worst in United States, according to the survey. And those air pollutions will. May be created by factories. However, the people who live in California they need to breathe the air, so those air pollutions will create a negative externalities for the people who live in the state. For positive externality, it could create some external value for the people. Okay, so for example, if you live in a safe community, and those safe community actually will provide you with positive. Externality or external value, if you live there, okay. So for negative externality, it will always result in social cost. Before we only talk about the cost to producers, right? So for the social cost, it will equal to the producer's cost. That is what we call a private cost plus the external cost. Those external costs. Is the negative externality brought by maybe the air pollutions or the air like the gas exhaustions? Okay, and for the positive externality, it will create social value. Okay, so for social value, it will equal to the private value. That is the value for consumers plus external value. Okay. Then, if the market has negative externality, then it will has the symbol here. Okay, so we will have two supply curves and one demand curve. One supply curve represents for private cost, and another supply curve represents for social cost. However, if the market has social value, then it will be the opposite. It will only have. One supply curve, but two demand curves. So these two demand curves, one reflected for the private value to consumers, and another one is the social value. Okay, so externalities are not good for our market. Okay, so in order to correct for externalities, government can have their own solutions. So if the government notice the market has negative externality, so maybe for example they. Monitor there is too much air pollution. They might put some corrective tax. Okay, so the corrective tax, idea corrective tax, will equal to external cost. And if the market now has positive externality, then actually positive externality is good for our society. And in order to encourage people, maybe to provide a safer community. For our society, then government might provide some subsidy. Okay, so they might provide some subsidy, and subsidy will equal to external value. Here, I would like to draw you a graph to show you which graph will represents for negative externality, and which graph will represents for positive externality. Okay, so let's look at the first one. You can notice for this first one, okay, very similar to the demand and supply model that we have learned in chapter four. We have the quantity on horizontal axis, price on vertical axis, demand curve downward sloping, supply curve upward trend, right? And this supply curve here is private cost. If there is no externality, we will notice this point A will actually will be our market equilibrium point, right? However, if now the market Has negative externality, which means we will have the social cost rather than the private cost. So the social cost could be here. 
this could be our another supply curve, okay? And it represents for social cost. So this social cost will equal to the private cost plus external cost. And how can we get the external cost from this two, from this graph? The external cost is just the vertical distance between social cost and the private cost. So we can notice here, this is point B, okay? Point B is another point that we call it as social optimal. You can notice this vertical distance, okay? This vertical distance will represent for external cost. So this one represents for external cost. And in order to make people maybe reduce the air pollution, then government might impose the corrective tax, which will make this corrective tax equal to external cost. So you can notice for this graph, it represents for negative externality and it only have one demand curve, but two supply curves. Okay, then let's look at another graph here, okay? So for this graph, I still begin with the typical demand and supply model, okay? But now, this demand curve will represent for the private value, okay? If now our economy has positive externality, which means now our society will face the social value, okay? So the social value could be here. This could be our social value. I will just write out another one here called social value. And social value will equal to private value plus external value, okay? So how can we get external value here? You can notice under the social value, you can have the vertical distance, okay? We can just see there is a, maybe we can just treat this, the vertical distance, okay, between these two demand curves will measure by, this one is external value, okay? And in order to encourage people to have more output, so for example, for the fruit short, we know fruit short will be really good for our society, right? However, probably not everyone would like to take fruit short. In order to encourage people to take the fruit short, maybe their pharmacies or pro might provide some subsidies if you take the fruit short, okay? So this is what we call, if our economy has positive externality, then we have two demand curves, okay? This is the typical graph for positive externality. We have two demand curve and one supply curve. And this point here, this point, Point B here will represent for social optimal, okay?